Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is such a joy to be here with you on Christmas Eve. I'm so excited. I love Christmas. I always love Christmas. My mom has told me most of my life that you just have Christmas in your heels. And so it's just been one of my favorite times, huh, as long as I can remember. So I'm happy to be with you. Our call to worship tonight is found um, underneath the video and also in your email. Join with me. I'll be one, you be all. This year, we dreamed of world peace. We dreamed of deep breaths and restful sleep. We dreamed of love that lasts and suffering that passes. We dreamed of doors open wide and a cure to disease. We dream because to dream is to believe. For to dream is to hope. To hope is to see. So make room in your being to dream yet again of a world without fear and a God that draws near. For it is almost Christmas. Love is almost here. May we dream to see and hope to believe. Let us worship holy God. In the beginning, God dreamed of a beautiful world. In Egypt, the Israelites dreamed of freedom. In the wilderness, the people dreamed of safety. In Jerusalem, the people dreamed of a Messiah. In Bethlehem, the shepherds and wise men dreamed of a new beginning. Then, several years later, Jesus walked this earth and dreams came true. The sick were healed, the poor had food, the forgotten and ignored were seen, the children were welcome. Everyone was invited to the table, and the world has never been the same. So tonight, we are those who dream. Tonight, we dream the same dreams of our ancestors before us. Tonight, we dream of justice and mercy of love and kindness, of peace and hope. Tonight we dream of a God that draws near to us out of unfailing love. May this candle be a reminder that there will be a day when every dream will be fulfilled. And until then, we will be those who dream. Let us worship holy God.
Holy God, if we listen closely, we can almost hear angels sing. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the bleats of sheep following shepherds and the hooves of confused barn animals. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the innkeeper say, no room. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the star whisper, follow me. If we listen closely, God, we can almost hear you. So, as we turn to your word, holy writer, don't let us miss a thing. The smell of the hay, the cool of the air, the way Mary cherished this wild dream in her heart. We want to hear it all. We don't want to miss a thing. So today we pray, can you help us listen closely? Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. So we are ready to take up our offering on Christmas Eve. We do not have a particular ministry that we are taking up the offering for this Christmas Eve. This has been a difficult year, and we are ever grateful for the ways that you have stepped up, giving to Helping Hands so that we can help people in the community and in our church in need. We are so grateful for that. We are grateful that we have helped um, a church member to go home to her family to get airfare to do that, um, to be there to celebrate a life. We are grateful for the food drives and all the things <clears throat> the church has done this year. That being said, our offerings for the general fund have been down. And that is how we pay the bills, is how we pay the salaries, is how we pay apportionments. And y'all, apportionments give to ministries. It helps people and places and things in need. And so all of these things make a difference. And um, I, I don't want to push too hard because I know it has been a rough year. So all I'm saying to you tonight, if you have year-end giving that you're trying to figure out what to do with, please consider Carborough United Methodist Church. We love you. We want to be a light for Jesus Christ here in this community, and we want to be that light for a long time to come. So let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the ways that you shine your light on us and that you call us to reflect it back into the world. We pray that as we celebrate your birth, that we would be a bright light in this community for you. 
Lord, bless the gifts that we receive that we might use them to share your love and your grace. We pray all of this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Verses 1 through 20. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him down in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, and you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And the angels went away from them into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that they had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured up all these things pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please join me in our affirmation of faith. Let us say what we believe. We believe in hope. We believe Amen. that the hope is to dream with our eyes wide open. We believe in peace. We, we believe that peace is not found by accident. Prepare the way. We believe in joy. We believe that joy is angel horses and gifts from the magi, as well as soul food, big tables, open doors, candlelight, fireside, singing in the shower, and the body of Christ gathered in one. We believe in love. We believe that God loves us so much that God could not stay away from him. So God showed up as a child. We believe that that love is real, and we know that it changes us. Therefore, we believe in the power of dreams. And we believe that nightmares, which are all too real here and now, will have no place in God's promised day. Until then, we believe in passing the light, in showing up, in doing the work, in listening for angel courses, and in learning from the youngest among us. We, we believe. believe. Help, Help our unbelief. unbelief. Amen. Amen.
I've been dreaming of Christmas Eve night. 
I love this time of the year. This is a great joy for me to be here with you. Um, I, I wish we could all gather safely in the church. It's one of my favorite things about the holiday is to gather together in the sanctuary on Christmas Eve night and to sing the carols together, light the candles, and celebrate the birth of our Savior. But we're still going to do that. We just can't do it the way we've always done it, and that's okay. Sometimes we learn to do something a little differently. And so this year, we are celebrating outside, and we are celebrating in our homes but I've still been dreaming about it. Christmas and Christmas, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day are just so full of anticipation, joy, excitement, awe and wonder. And we need a little more awe and wonder in the world. Christmas and Easter are the two big holidays for um people who celebrate Jesus. For those of us who follow Jesus, that's our big days and good reason for it. They are filled with joy. First, the Word of God becomes flesh and dwells among us. That is Christmas, right? That's the story. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. God is with us, Emmanuel. God came to us in a way that we could relate to better, understand, at least in part, um, maybe more than ever before in the person of Jesus Christ. And at Easter, we are celebrating the fact that this word made flesh, Jesus who dwelled among us, who was God with us, that we thought was gone. And when I say we, I mean humanity, all of creation, Thought had left us. Thought was buried in a tomb, came again, defeated, conquered death. What a joy Easter Sunday is to celebrate the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Death no longer has the victory, no longer has the final word. On a year like this one, that is truly a peaceful thing to know, isn't it? But as much as we anticipate celebrating the birth of our Savior again, we remember that we care about this baby born and laid in a manger because we know about the cross and the empty tomb. And if it weren't for that part of the story, we probably would not remember the part we, that we celebrate tonight. But there's more to the story, y'all. There's more because there's all the in-between. You know that poem, um, The Dash, that talks about, you see it on um, um, grave markers, tombstones, that the year someone was born and the year someone died, and the dash that sits between them, and it's that dash that is the person's entire life and story. And it is the entire life on this earth, the story of Jesus Christ, that is most important of all. Those two things we celebrate are important, and yes, um, the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of um, and the defeating death and resurrection is certainly super important. But we downplay way too much everything that happens in between birth, death, and resurrection. That's not all there is to it. The Word became flesh and dwelt among humankind to teach us how to live with each other, to teach us what it means to live a life that is not full of sin and hatred and violence and anger and jealousy and all the stuff that gets in our way each and every day. This year has been full of some of the ugliest things. I'm not just talking about a virus. Um, that's been bad enough. 
But put that aside for a moment and look at everything else that's been going on. We must take the life of Jesus Christ seriously, the teachings of Jesus Christ seriously. We cannot just celebrate birth and resurrection. We have to learn how to live as Jesus Christ taught us to live. So let's begin to let that be our dream, that we might be true followers of Jesus Christ. It isn't just about Jesus forgiving my sins. It's about what do I do with my life now that Jesus has forgiven my sins? How do I learn to live and every day become more and more and more who God created me to be? How do I become more like Jesus? We are created in God's image. We are called to follow Jesus. How do we do that? So let's not just be Christmas people and Easter people. Let's be Jesus people every single day. We won't get it right 100% of the time. But the more we try, the more we follow, the more we make that our goal and our dream in life, the better this world will be. It's called sanctification. Sanctifying grace is a gift from God. We are justified when we say yes to Jesus Christ. Our sins are forgiven. And yet God continues to work in us and with us each and every day so that we become more and more like Jesus Christ. Let's let that be our dream and our goal. Let us follow in the footsteps of this Savior that we are celebrating right now. This Savior that we are singing joy to the world about. Let it not be, um, let's not cheapen the life, the birth, the life, and the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ by saying it's just about getting my sins forgiven and then carrying on as if nothing has changed. We must change. We must follow Jesus. If we love him, we will try to follow him. And we don't have to do it alone. We have the help of the Holy Spirit every step of the way. This world can be a better place. This world can be a better place. It's a good place, but it has been, um, it has seen some rough times. We are in a broken place right now, but we can make it better because God has shown us the way through the word made flesh. Thanks be to God. Let us celebrate the birth of our Savior in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For this part of our worship, you might look to light a candle. You can hold it like you would if we were in the sanctuary together to sing, or you can just light some in the room wherever you are. But let's sing together now, Silent Night.
Oh,